Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today we're gonna take a look at this model. This is the 231201 Shark Arm. I am very excited to do this one. We're gonna talk about some contour selection and reusing the same sketch in multiple features. We're gonna do some delete face, one of my favorite commands, and we're gonna finish off with some pretty cool stuff that we can do in Hull Wizard. So let's get into it. And if you enjoy this type of tutorial, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to let me know down in the comments. Ow. So we're gonna do something a little special today. We're gonna run this tutorial using SolidWorks 2015. And you may have heard me say in the past that SOLIDWORKS 2015 is my absolute favorite build of SOLIDWORKS. And the reason why is because I just think it represents that kind of sweet spot between getting the best performance from the software, very little instability, and there's not really that much that has been added between 2015 and the modern versions that I consider a real deal breaker. Most of the functionality was there in 2015, very well refined. Of course, they've added some little nicety since then, but you know, let me know down in the comments, what is your absolute favorite build of SOLIDWORKS and why? So let's do this in 2015. We're gonna start out here by taking a look at this 2D print. As always, I challenge my students to see how quickly they can create these models. So let's click play on this video and I'll include a link down in the description to this video. And let's start out by just looking at the 2D print and coming up with a game plan. So for this model, what really jumps out at me is that we've got these kind of two cylindrical ends of the model. And so I think that kind of makes sense to be the foundation for this model. And then there's kind of a blend, a conical blend here, this conical face that's going between those two cylindrical faces. So I think that's probably gonna be my second feature. Now we can see here that the way that this is defined is that that conical face is tangent to the cylindrical faces down here at the bottom if we're if we're looking at this thing in the front view. So I'm definitely gonna need to have those circles before I can create the geometry for that cone. And I think I'll do that cone as a revolve. Now, this feature here is pretty interesting. I originally had one strategy of how I would build that feature, that kind of tombstone shape that's sticking up. But then after watching Victor K run this model, I completely changed my strategy of how to build that feature. I think he's got a much more elegant solution. So I'm gonna show you that along the way. We'll finish up here by creating some holes. I'm gonna create this hole here and actually punch it all the way through the model. And then I'm gonna come back with a delete face to get rid of that excess geometry there. And I'm gonna punch these holes here using the hole wizard feature for dowel. Just a little bit to mix things up to maybe show you some new functionality. And you can kind of take that for what it is and maybe use it in your workflow. All right, I know that took about 90 seconds to plan that out, but I think it's always a good idea to start out by looking at your 2D print coming up with a game plan, thinking about how you're gonna build the model. Now, let's get into it. So here we are in SOLIDWORKS 2015. I'm gonna choose to create a new document here. Let's take a look at our templates. We've got a template here in millimeters and let's go over to the tree and assign a material 1060 alloy. I'm gonna start out by going to the front plane and creating a sketch for that first cylindrical extrusion. And this is where I'm gonna deviate a little bit from what I traditionally do. Usually I, I encourage you guys to keep your sketches simple, but I'm actually gonna lay out all of the geometry or a lot of the geometry in this first sketch. So I'm gonna take these two circles here, define them with a diameter, make them horizontal, and then I'm gonna assign a dimension to uh, define the center to center distance between them. And then I'm gonna create a sketch for my second feature or my third feature, which is gonna be that revolved shape, that conical shape blending these two cylinders together. So I'm gonna jump into the line command. And a lot of times in SOLIDWORKS, when you make a line between two circles, you can automatically create that tangency relationship so you don't have to go back in after the fact. Of course, if that doesn't happen, a little trick that I like to use is to do a crossing select here over those two entities and then assign the tangency relationship here in the context toolbar. That's kind of a good pro move that you can uh, keep in your toolkit. So here you can see that I'm gonna finish off by creating the remaining geometry for this sketch that is now fully defined. You'll notice here that this, this uh, vertical point to that tangency point is not concentric to the circle. And similarly, this vertical point here is not concentric to that circle because the tangency point is a little bit of an overlap because it's on the downslope. So just keep that in mind when you're creating that geometry. 
Now I'm going to create the geometry for that kind of tombstone shape that's sticking up at an angle. And once again, I'm going to create a line here and you're going to see that the tangency relationship is created automatically. Now I'm going to create another line coming off of that first line perpendicular, another line coming off of that line perpendicular, and then a final line coming off of that line perpendicular. And just to kind of tidy up this sketch, I'll connect these endpoints and I'll drop this point here right on the origin. And what that does for me is it sets me up so that I can create my angle dimension here at 33 degrees, and I can create my distance dimension here, which is coming from that tangency point, and which is being defined here as a distance of 80 millimeters. So that's a little more complicated than what I normally make in a sketch, but I think you're going to see in a moment that this, this kind of layout work is really going to pay off. So now I'm going to jump into my first extrusion command. I'll pick this circle here to just extrude that contour. I'm going to extrude that out to a depth of 110, and I'm going to right mouse button in the background and say mid plane, and then right mouse button again. Now I'm going to go into the tree and I'm going to show that sketch one so that I can use it and reuse it for the next three features. I'm going to pick this circle here. I'm going to press the S key, jump into the extrude command. I'm going to type in the distance of this extrusion 60 right mouse button in the background, mid plane, right mouse button again. I'm going to right mouse button here on the sketch that I want to revolve. I'm going to choose select chain and then I'm going to hold control and I'm going to pick this center line, let go of control and I'm going to go up here to my features toolbar and choose the revolve boss base command. There we go. That creates that feature there. And now for this final feature, my original plan here was to create a new reference geometry plane by choosing this line and choosing the endpoint, and then to go onto that plane and create that kind of tombstone shape. The challenge is that it's kind of hard to figure out how deep the tombstone shape should go in this direction. And when I watched Victor K run this model in the tournament, I was super impressed by how he handled this feature. Here's what Victor K did. Right mouse button, select chain to get that rectangle, S key extrude, and let's turn that into an extrusion here with a depth of 52 millimeters. Now we're going to right mouse button in the background, we're going to choose mid plane, and we're going to right mouse button again. And that sets us up for the rest of the model. Now we can hide this sketch, and now we can use... One of my favorite commands in SolidWorks, the delete face command. I've got it mapped right here to my S key, delete face. I'm gonna delete this face here, delete and patch. And we see that what SolidWorks does is it takes that face and removes it, leaving us with this kind of perfect height for that tombstone. Now we're gonna jump into a fillet command. We're gonna use what's called the full round fillet command. So this fourth option here, pick the first face, right mouse button, pick the second face, right mouse button, pick the third face, right mouse button, and boom, that finishes that feature. Very, very clean. Now we're gonna jump into a whole wizard command. We're gonna say we wanna do a counter bore whole wizard. We're gonna use ANSI metric. We're gonna go down here to show custom sizing. And we're gonna say that the custom sizing for this is gonna be 16 tab key. Takes us to the next field there. Uh, 32 and uh, tab key. And then the depth of this is going to be eight millimeters tab key. Now we click positions and we're going to click this face right here. Wake up the center point by holding our mouse over that arc and drop that counter bore right on that center point, right mouse button to finish. Now we're going to begin the whole wizard command again. And this time we're going to use the option here for hole. So we click this option here for hole. And now we're going to say that this is going to have a hole with a diameter here of 20 millimeters. So we go positions, we're gonna choose this face here. We're gonna wake up the center point and there we go. That gives us a through hole. Here we can just press enter. When you press enter, that will repeat the previous command. So that means we can come over here and just type in the new, new diameter of 43, enter, go to positions, pick this face here, go right to the center, which is right on the origin, right mouse button to finish. Pick this face, begin a sketch, orient the view. Let's create the sketch of the rectangle here. Here I'm gonna use the tab key to advance to the, the horizontal width of that rectangle. Type in 16 for that width. Hit escape, pick that origin point, hold control, pick this line, make that midpoint. And then we can use the smart dimension command. And here if you hold shift, that will allow you to dimension to the tangency point on that arc. So instead of dimensioning to the center of the arc by holding shift, I go to the tangency point. That's going to be 50 millimeters, and then we'll do S key, extrude cut, and this is going to run through all, and right mouse button to finish that. 
And now we've got one more little feature to clean up. And so once again, we're gonna use our best friend, the delete face command. We're gonna press the S key here, go to delete face, pick this face here, delete and patch and hit the green check mark and boom, that finishes that model. We give it the final spin. We go to evaluate mass properties. And the answer we're coming up with here is 1996 grams. So let's go back to the video here. We go back to the video, we pause the video, eight minutes and 47 seconds. And so now we can roll to the end of that video and we can see that the correct answer is 1996. So we got it correct. So I think that's a really fun tutorial, one that I've definitely been looking forward to. Let me know down in the comments, what was your favorite new skill that you learned from this tutorial? And of course, if you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for the next Too Tall Toby tutorial.